Let's do it. Welcome to our weekly morning worship service at Honeyville United Methodist Church in Weewaw, Hitchcock, Florida, via YouTube and live audience. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, glorious in power and purity, we adore you. Creator and Lord of the universe, we're amazed that you care for us and when, we're, and when we are far off, you sought us in Christ to bring us back to the fold of your love. Forgive us that we still sometimes turn away from you like lost sheep. Draw us back to you, we pray. Assure us of your love and enable us to share your love with others. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. amen. This morning's message is coming from the book of John. John chapter 10, verses 11 through 18. John chapter 10, verses 11 through 18. And scripture state, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me just as the father knows me and I know the father and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice and there shall be one flock and one shepherd the reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I received from my Father, the Word of God for the people of God. God. This morning message is titled, and it is it is a question: Do we know the Good Shepherd? I say it again: Do we know the Good Shepherd? Let's get into this message. I heard a story about two men. About two men who were asked to read the 23rd Psalm. A lot of us know it by heart. The first one, who was an orator, stood in front of a large crowd and started reading. And if we know anything about an orator, they're trained to speak well. And he read with so much voice technicalities as if we were listening to a drama on the radio. He knew when to pause and when to read faster, when to lower his voice and when to speak louder and enunciate his words. In short, when he read the passage, he did it very, very well. And the crowd gave him a standing ovation when he finished. Man, he make them feel good. And then came the second man. And this man stood in front of the crowd and started reading. But unlike the first man, this man had no background in public speaking. He was not a trained orator. He just read the passages. The passages. He read it calmly and he read it with deep personal emotions. And after he read it, no one in the crowd applauded. Everyone listening was just silent. They were in deep meditation because he reached the core of their spirit. And after a short while of silence, the first man stood up, faced the crowd and said, 
Do you know? Do any of you know the difference between the two of us? How our message differed with the same 23rd song. And he said, this man knows the song. He said, I know the words. This man, though, knows the song. Another true story I heard about. And it involves a certain pastor. And to many of us, pastors are the ones who are well versed with the Bible. The ones who use the word of God to encourage people. The ones who stand strong even in the midst of trials. The ones who have a very strong faith are the ones who never give up on life. Sometimes this people's view of the pastor. But in this true story, this pastor had thoughts of actually giving up because of his overwhelming trials, all the things he had to deal with with people. This pastor had come to the point when, yes, the Bible was still an everyday companion, but unlike before, the words became empty and lifeless when the pastor would go over the scriptures. By our scriptures today, however, talk about the good shepherd. And I would like everyone to listen to my voice to reflect and ask ourselves, do we know the good shepherd? Do we know the good shepherd? One way to find out if we really do know the good shepherd is to assess our own life by asking ourselves some questions. Does your life reflect who the good shepherd is? That we do not only know him in our heads and that we do not only say that the good shepherd is Jesus when he is the second member of the Trinity. That is why the good shepherd is God. But more like, can our lives actually be a living definition of who the good shepherd is? Our Lord and Savior said we should be Christ-like. So from today's scriptures, the question is, what characteristics of the good shepherd can we see? In response to these three characteristics, just three. Ask ourselves, how do we see our lives if we are claiming that we are one of the sheep? The one who are believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. Just ask yourself these questions. The first, first characteristic of the good shepherd is that of selflessness. Selflessness. According to what I have read about sheep, they are prone to danger. They do not have the capacity and the ability to defend themselves from wild animals who will come and attack them. Sheep are helpless. And as such, a shepherd who is good, a shepherd who cares about his sheep, will never let his sheep get attacked by stronger animals. The good shepherd will rather get hurt or even be killed for the sake of his sheep. And just as how humankind was on the verge of death because of our bondage to sin, if there is no one to defend us or no one selfless enough to sacrifice for us, the danger will surely come chasing us. But the good shepherd, the good shepherd claimed these words three times saying, I lay down my life for my sheep. Just as how Jesus selflessly sacrificed his life for us sinners. And that is not because we did something worthy of his death, but only because he is good. Jesus selflessly sacrificed for our salvation and took upon our sins through his death. The question, can we see how selfless Jesus is? The shepherd's sheep can never pay him with anything in return. But still, but still because Jesus is good, he was willing to lay down his life for them. Now, what does this characteristic of the good shepherd mean for the sheep? We need to understand this. 
Because of the selflessness of the shepherd, the sheep can have hope. The sheep can have hope. We can have hope. Those who are claiming to know the good shepherd should reflect a life full of hope. And you might be asking yourself, preacher, hope for what? Well, since you asked, hope that through Jesus' selflessness, those who will believe in him would have an eternal life. And hope that whatever hardships we may be going through in this world, even right now, that the pains would end, that Jesus will come again. And this is a promise. And unlike humans, our Lord and Savior keeps his promises. That is why Jesus rose again from the dead. That is why our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ will come again. Now, my many questions. I'm going to throw a whole bunch of questions out there. Just something for us to reflect upon in our own hearts. Do we see ourselves living with so much hope despite the pain, despite the suffering? Do we sometimes forget when we're overwhelmed by this world chaos that Jesus died and rose again on the third day? That Jesus selflessly sacrificed his life to bring about the salvation of mankind. Do we only feel hopeful during Lent? Do we only feel hopeful during Easter? Does our hope quickly fade after these seasons have passed? Friends, friends, how true is Jesus' death to you? How true is Jesus' resurrection to you? The second characteristic has the characteristic of being relational. The good shepherd cares for us. Because of his selfless sacrifice, there was a broken relationship that was mended. A relationship that was once cut because of our sins, because of our transgressions. Jesus is a good shepherd who wants a relationship with us. The proof, though, I'm always giving you proof. And I'm going to take it back to the Bible. It is written in today's word where Jesus said, I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Jesus, Jesus is not far from us. Jesus is watching us. Jesus wants to hear us. So Urban, what does this mean for the sheep? It means because the shepherd is relational, the sheep can converse with Jesus. We can have that personal relationship. Whatever we are going through right now, Jesus wants us to talk to him. When there's a relationship, communication is necessary. Always talk to Jesus. Brothers and sisters, God listens to you. God knows you. God even know the number of hairs on our head, even my bald head, Miss Henrietta. Don't look so surprised. God knows the numbers. And God knows every single detail of what is happening to us. And most importantly, and most importantly, sacrificing his son for our sake means that we are important to God. Tell God everything you feel God should be the one we are closest to. God should be the first one we run to when we need someone to talk to. Tell God about all your struggles. Tell God about what's happening in your family, in your job, even the struggles that we have within ourselves. Tell God. Talk to him. And I'll break it down to the most simplest form that I can break it down to. Pray. 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 The third and final characteristic of the good shepherd is that he is a good keeper. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is a good keeper. You see, in my research, I also read that shepherds in the ancient times, you want to know where they slept? They slept right at the, at the door of the pen. They didn't go crawl up some distance from the sheep to sleep. They slept right at the door of the pen. And 
This is to make sure though, they only did it for one reason, to make sure the sheep were safe. You see, the good shepherd keeps the sheep away from danger. Having a shepherd to sleep in front of the door of the pen does not mean that the ferocious animal would not stop attacking the sheep. Just as we cannot assure that life is without any threats, without any pains, without any suffering, we're under the care of the good shepherd. We are still not exempt from the threats of life. And I've heard too many people say, Urban, why do you pray to that God? When you still feel pain, when you feel suffering, when people die, some woman drove her car into the side of a building in Michigan and killed two children at a birthday party, as drunk as she was. Why does God let that happen? He doesn't promise that. And most of us from time to time are experiencing these kinds of threats in life. But despite the danger, knowing that our good shepherd is a good keeper, we how we should respond is the question. How should we respond when all these tragic things seem to happen? And the answer is simple. Because the shepherd is a good keeper, the sheep can depend on him. We can depend on God and his word. Without knowing, without us knowing the enemy is already using our hurts. The enemy is using our fears and our struggles to destroy our relationship with the Lord. And sometimes because of too much fear, sometimes because of too much anxiety, we're making our own move. Is how we can escape. And we make moves depending on ourselves, looking only at what we can do. And so what normally happens? People give up. People give up on family. People give up on their jobs. People give up on themselves. People give up hope. And people give up on our Lord and Savior. And sometimes people give up so much that they take their own lives. You know, we seem to forget that we have been dependent on God and not on ourselves. God's word said we cannot do it in our own strength. And the Lord is reminding us today, hold on. The Lord is reminding us, depend on his might. The Lord is reminding us, do not depend on your own strength but to depend on his faithfulness and not on the lives of the world. And now as I bring this message to a close, we have come to the realization that knowing the good shepherd entails a response from his sheep. We said that because the shepherd is selfless, the sheep can have hope. Because the shepherd is relational, the sheep can converse with him. Because the shepherd is a good keeper, the sheep can depend on him. Every characteristic, not some, every characteristic of the good shepherd should reflect in the lives of his sheep. After we have been reminded about all these, I would like to ask you again, do we know the good shepherd? Amen. Perhaps. Perhaps my message to someone in a special way. In a way it's so special that if you want to now give your life to Jesus, then repeat this message with me. If you just simply believe it in your heart, but repeat it with your mouth that Jesus was raised from the dead, you will be saved. See how the loop gets closed on all of this stuff? We have to believe that Jesus lived, Jesus died, Jesus is resurrected, and he is not some dead person that we worship. That our Lord and Savior is alive. And he wants to be with us. The good shepherd. And now as I bring this message to a close for those on YouTube. May the God of peace who brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus. The great shepherd of the sheep. By the blood of the eternal covenant make us perfect in every good work. To do his will. Working in us that which is well pleasing in his sight, to whom we glory forever and ever. Amen.